when you see your customer tell you something, slow down and look at them right in the eye. I mean, you guys ain't going to hurt his feelings. I, he's speaking too fast. Now, look, you may be nervous up here, right? But I want you to do this, okay? The way you speak, you're a great guy. Seriously, I want you to use your words. Can you put some power behind them? Hey, man, I, I, I get it. I mean, I told him, Bible, put your hand out, right? Matter of fact, reach out and say, man, I get it. I totally understand, right? But slow down. When you see your customer tell you something, slow down and look at them right in the eye. Make sure they know at that moment when you're going to close that deal, there is nothing more important in this world than them, okay? And you feel what they're saying. You understand it and you feel it. However, there is a better way. And I'm going to go over it with you. And I'd like right now to, to, to be able to, for you to choose me as your trusted advisor. I see hundreds of people make decisions on vehicles every single month in here. And do you know what? I wish every single one of those decisions that got made was on a vehicle with a little more miles on it. You know why? Because they're just machines. They're machines and the mileage on them, whether they're 40,000 or 70,000, they're all going to drive to a half a million miles. So what's the difference? Money. And at the end of the day, is money important to you? Yeah. So you get a lower sell price. You get a lower monthly payment. You get a vehicle that drives like it's got 10,000 miles on it, which isn't that all that matters. It's safe for you and your family. And then when you go to trade it back in in a couple years, do you think cars become worth more or worth less when you, when you own them? Worth less. When the depreciation hits, you don't get stuck in that tornado cycle. Isn't it nice? I wish everybody had the opportunity to buy a higher mile vehicle like this one, but they don't. You've just won the lottery. Now I switched it on you. Okay? I want you to understand something. You are a master communicator. I told, and I didn't say, what, she, what he said is that I know that it has high miles on it, but let's go ahead and still do business. What I'm going to say is, aren't we lucky that it actually has a little more miles now that we've discussed it? And I wish everybody had the opportunity to buy a vehicle with a little more miles so they could save the money that you're about to save. It's just not available. But you guys, for you, it is. Isn't that nice? Boom. Listen to me. Who creates the atmosphere in which the customer lives in? The salesman. What's it called? It's called, it's called transfer of emotion, making them feel the way you feel, but it's called buyer management. Who's the buyer? The customer. Who's the one that is responsible for managing them? We are. It's our job to manage the buyer. Listen, I need you to understand this. Do you know why this is called the Master Closer Seminar? Because it's not called, I want to sell cars seminar, sell more cars seminar, okay? It's called the Grand Fucking Master Closer Seminar. Why? Because I want to show you that your people need some guidance, okay? I do too when I go to buy shit. It's just I can't find it. Nobody's a fucking professional anymore. Nobody studies the art of speaking. Nobody studies the art of working through with strategies and conversations. Why? Because we're too fucking busy doing nothing. Busy equals broke. Productive equals paid. You guys want to get paid? You know what you got to do to get paid? You got to become the best in the world. I want to tell you this. You guys have a whole nother level and you're seeing it already. How, how do you get it? Simple. Pay close attention today. Take tons of notes. Stay dialed in. When your mind starts to swerve, guess what? Knock it off. It's swerving that got you where you're at right now. Okay? We stay on the straight line path to what we want, the fastest road. Okay? And by the way, listen to me. You're a badass. I know you are, man. You're a badass. But guess what? You just got called out in front of all these people. And guess what? No, no, no. That's going to piss you off. So when I see you next time, you're going to fucking be ready for me. Can I go again? No, no, no. I'm going to get you in a little bit. I'm going to get you in a little bit. Yeah, I've already gave you the answers. He's like, can I go again? No, we'll hit you later. Hold on. I'm going to rotate out. Good job. I'm going to rotate out. Do me a favor. We're going to, I'm not going to stay on this one. I'm going to flip around it. By the way, real quick, can I go through this? Pull the word track up real quick. Let me show you something. So everybody here, I'm going to show you something. I need a coach here. Where's one of my coaches? Where, who, who can say this word track? I got it. Okay, hold on. Here's what I want to do. Everybody watch this. 
Just watch this real quick. If you want to know how to uh, learn, oh. how did you learn what you said? You, you, but, and then you wrote it down and you studied it, right? Okay, you see that? I like the car, but the miles are too high. If you want to know how to get good at it, right? Memorize it. Can you guys memorize shit? When you move houses and you go to a new home, you have to memorize the new address, right? Like it's just a little bit weird the first couple weeks, isn't it? Right? Watch this. Ryan, don't look. Andy, I completely understand the miles are too high. But look, if you were to buy a vehicle with less miles, you end up spending more money. I mean, look, if you took this 2012 Dodge Ram with 80,000 miles and you found the same exact truck with let's say 40,000 miles, and you drove both those cars for three years, which one would you end up owing more money on when you went to trade it in? The one with less miles. I mean, look, our vehicle having a few more miles, the largest part of the depreciation cycle has already been taken into consideration. So when you look at the bigger picture, you won't be upside down in our vehicle or the other vehicle with less miles, you most likely will be. So at the end of the day, going with a highly rated vehicle like ours, with a few more miles is definitely the best decision if you want to save a lot of money right now and later on when you go to trade it in, baby. Woo! Let's go! Hey, I love the spin at the end. Hey, here's my deal. I'm going to ask you this question, and I want you right now, we're going to move through these quick, I want you to ask yourself this. Are you battle-tested?